Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch with a bit of an obituary of sorts, unfortunately. Today we are talking about the closure of Corona Labs. Now Corona Labs has nothing to do with the coronavirus or the Corona beer, but they did make a product called Corona, which was a mobile focused 2D game SDK. It's been around for quite a while actually, and it is a C++ OpenGL powered framework with a Lua layer over top of it designed to make making mobile games and simple 2D games very easy. Uh, it was originally founded by a couple of people that worked on the Adobe Flash team, and it's had a long and storied history as we will see in a minute. Now we're going way back. Back in uh, September of 2012, I did a roundup of the big game engines at the time, and it's kind of amazing how much this world has changed. So this was, I think, back before Unity was available for free, and you had products like Corona, Gitteros, Love, and Moy, and this is how things used to work back in those days. You used to pay for game engines. You pay $200 a year uh, for different platforms, and then if you wanted both platforms, you were paying up to $350 a year, whereas Gitteros was $150 or $450 a year for the pro version. And Let's just say, um, still around, open source and free, kind of still around, open source and free, uh, still around, open source and free now, community supported, and now these guys are going to be open source and free as well. Um, so what's happened with Corona is not an immediately uh, new symptom. So again, the age of selling a game engine for a fixed monthly cost is kind of dying. There's only a few companies out there pulling it off these days. There's Game Maker, uh, there's Construct3, uh, RPG Game Maker, and a few others, but it, it's a harder and harder industry to work in. And like I said, the writing has kind of been on the wall for Corona for quite some time. Going back to November of 2015, Corona Labs was acquired by Perk. All right, and then uh, in September of 2016, Perk sold Corona Labs back to its original founders. And then in March of 2017, Corona Labs was sold, this time to Apodeal, a mobile advertising firm. And then in June of 2017, Corona was made available for free. They moved to a different product model going on there. And then in January of 2019, the Corona game engine was open sourced. Now it was open sourced under a mixed commercial license. So you had commercial or GPL v3 licensing options. But you can tell by this history of things going on, there was trouble getting a new business model going on at Corona Labs. And that has accumulated in today's news that Corona Labs is basically dead. Now, unfortunately, this is their web page right now. This is how well it's loading. Let me just try and do a refresh on this one. And yeah, I, I'm going to assume web page is just not going to be working anytime soon. Um, so I actually managed to copy the text into a slightly more readable form. Let's go take a look at that now. Okay, so this is the announcement on uh, the Corona Labs webpage, if it'll ever load again. Hopefully it will come back. Uh, basically, it's a roadmap for the future. Uh, first, let us uh, separate the business entity Corona Labs from the product Corona. On May 1st, 2020, Corona Labs will cease to operate. The main reason for this decision is the difference between income this business generates and the operational expenses demanded. We assume that many of you as mobile business owners yourself can relate with this move, relate to this move. We appreciate your understanding and would like to thank everyone for contributing to our community's growth. We've seen a lot of great Great games and apps produced by you, the community, for large studios to determine to determined indie developers. You surprised and amazed us. While Corona Lab will fade into an um, entry in the computer. All right, there goes my mouse. Uh, into the computer software corporate history as a business entity, Corona, the product will go on as an open source project. Here are the details and how we're planning to proceed. So the good news here is if you're using Corona for a game or you're considering Corona for a game, it is going to be available in open source format. They're gonna switch from that uh, very limiting GPL v3 license. We'll get to that in a second, but it's gonna be moved to a more MIT friendly license. So um, some of the Corona Lab staff have expressed an interest in continuing to work with Corona uh, as an on an as available hobby project. So and some engine development will continue. There's a possibility that engineers will seek funding through platforms like Patreon or GitHub sponsors to continue working in a larger capacity, but they won't have Corona Labs paying for development anymore. Apple Deal, uh, again, remember they were the ones that purchased them back in 2017, I think it was. Uh, we'll continue to fund infrastructure costs, which if you can tell by the way the website's working right now, Mm. Um, and work with the open source staff to keep the Apple Deal plugin up to date. Uh, Corona open source license will change. As I mentioned, it was previously commercial plus GPL v3. It is going to switch the MIT license. Um, 
So that's very nice. Uh, Chrome Labs will remove the splash screen restrictions and plug-in license check from the native and the simulator build. All first-party plugins will be open sourced and be available on GitHub. Corona's daily builds will be built using tools available for open source projects and would be available on the GitHub releases. Uh, we will change the Corona simulator to be an offline tool so you don't have to use it through their servers. Uh, building for all supported platforms using local storage as a source for plugins. Uh, marketplace sales will cease. Vendors will be paid what they are owed and we will continue to distribute updates for the plugins themselves. Users will be able to download, uh, purchase plugins and assets before the store closes. That will happen. Um, Corona Labs will stop accepting new submissions to the marketplace on February the 15th, which is tomorrow. Self-hosted plugins will be turned on for everybody, um, everyone, so community plugin developers can continue to provide plugins. We will migrate the forums and coronalabs.com website content to another platform since the current setup is tied to an expensive infrastructure. We may need several community members to volunteer to administer the new forums. Uh, we are still working on what the Corona Labs website will become. Uh, community is welcome to spin up discussions on other places like Reddit. Um, and so on, Facebook, etc. Corona Labs maintains social presence. I'm going to use it for tips, news, and so on. Uh, all this will not happen overnight. We're working on changes to parts of the engine. We will release them gradually, moving the build process offline, as well as migrating content to different platforms. We will post updates on the progress, as well as send out one or more final emails with all the details. Feel free to follow them on GitHub, etc., etc. So, yeah, not good news. Basically, Corona Labs is no longer in existence. They will no longer be funding Corona. Uh, but the nice thing is the way they did this, they spun it off into an open source project uh, that is uh, very uh, friendly with the way they took this approach. So if you're currently working with Corona, you got really nothing to worry about now. Everything that they've done, they did it in a very uh, stand up manner and they are actually already on uh, GitHub to a certain degree. Now they had some things uh, like the simulator and the various different platform deployments that were server side and those are being migrated to offline tools. So those are not available as of yet. But if you are a Corona Labs or a Corona user, uh, you're fine for now and Corona actually may become more successful in some ways, becoming fully open source project. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if a new community forms around this. If some of the developers stick around and start up, you know, patron funding or GitHub sponsors funding, it'd be interesting to see how many of the existing licensees will switch to that model and maybe this will work out just fine for those developers as well. Uh, but again, I have to stress this market, it, it, you know, if you're trying to sell a game engine in this day and age, it's going to get harder and harder and harder when you have the likes of Unity and Unreal available free-ish. Uh, you have uh, Godot available completely free. Um, you've got a ton of different uh, frameworks out there, um, Love, LibGDX. Um, it just kind of keeps going and going and going. You've got GDevelop, etc. There are all of these different you know, game engines and frameworks out there that you're competing against that are offering free. So it's hard to make money in this segment. And that's why we are seeing a company that was sold to so many different people, so many different business models tried. And in the end, they kind of gave up. And now it's up to the community to decide if it is going to continue to be supported. So you'll check out now. You can see Corona is still available right now. It is still under the GPL V3 license. So that has not happened yet. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how long these changes take. Um, as you can see, They've been happening. The last update was three days ago here. So it'll be interesting to see how long it takes to migrate away from their closed servers to a fully open development model and get that license version changed. But yeah, well, I got to give Corona Labs credit. You know, you, they could have just shut down and said, screw y'all. Uh, but instead they did it in a classy manner. Nice thing is open sourcing up. So if you are tied into their technologies, you are not out of luck. And frankly, it still makes Corona a very viable option going forward. In fact, it may be a more viable option now because it is under such a liberal open source license. Maybe it'll attract a community around it. All right, so that's it. A bit of bad news about the Corona Labs people. I hope the developers there land on their feet. And let me know what you think of this SDK in general. Are you going to check it out now that it is MIT licensed or still not interested? All right, I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.